Hello. With this video, you will learn to describe your feelings and emotions in English. When we are happy, we can also say that we are glad, delighted, cheerful, and joyful. And the opposites are unhappy, upset, low-spirited, and disappointed. And when the feeling of happiness is really strong, you can be ecstatic, thrilled, euphoric, and overjoyed. And the words with the opposite meaning are miserable, depressed, tearful, heartbroken. There are some interesting English idioms about happiness. He was beside himself with joy. He was on cloud nine. He was jumping for joy. And also some idioms about feeling sad. He was down in the dumps. He was overcome with grief. It was terrible news. It broke my heart. When somebody suddenly starts laughing, we can say that the person burst into laughter or burst out laughing. And when people suddenly start crying, the phrase is burst into tears or burst out crying. And in general, people may be in a good mood or in a bad mood. When people get slightly angry, the ways to describe that state are annoyed, irritated, irritable. What's the difference between irritated and irritable? Irritated is the current state of a person, and irritable means that it's very easy to irritate the person, it's more like a tendency. And when people get really angry, the words to describe that feeling are furious, outraged, pissed or pissed off, and we can say that people go mad or they become cross. The word cross is the synonym for the word angry. And the adjective pissed or pissed off is very informal or even a bit vulgar. And the opposites for these quite strong adjectives are the words happy, pleased, peaceful, satisfied and content. There are also some idioms to describe the feeling of anger. Look, she lost her temper. He flew off the handle. She was shaking with rage. Now let's look at the synonyms for the verbs like and dislike. So, the synonyms for like. Love, enjoy, adore, be into. So, you can say she is really into swimming, which means she likes swimming very much. And when you dislike something or someone, you can say that you hate it, you can't stand it, and some stronger adjectives despise and loathe. Please mind that we must use in after the phrase I can't stand. For example, I can't stand waking up early. There are also some adjectives which we use to talk about likes and dislikes. For example, he's fond of swimming, he's crazy about swimming, he's keen on swimming. But the phrase keen on is not very popular in the States, it's quite a British phrase. Another interesting word is the adjective mad, because you can use it when you talk about your likes and when you talk about your dislikes. For example, He's mad about singing, which means that he likes singing very much. Or, she was really mad at me, which means that she was really angry with me. Let's look now at one more very strong feeling. When people are afraid, they are frightened, scared, horrified or terrified. And the opposites are calm, unconcerned, brave or relaxed. 
Let's look at some idiomatic phrases to talk about fear. I was with my heart in my mouth. I was scared to death. I was in a cold sweat. And now some idioms meaning not afraid. He was as cool as a cucumber. He was cool, calm and collected. The next group of adjectives shows whether we are interested or not in something. So the synonyms are curious, captivated, absorbed or absorbed and engrossed. And the opposites are indifferent, impartial, bored, unconcerned. The words indifferent and impartial are not the same in meaning. Indifferent is when someone doesn't actually care, but impartial is a positive word, is when a person tries to be neutral, objective and unbiased. It's also useful to learn the prepositions used with these adjectives. For example, curious about the story captivated by the story, absorbed in the story, engrossed in the story. More examples with the second group of adjectives. She was indifferent to those people. She tried to be impartial to both sides of the conflict. She was bored with the story, or she was bored by the story, and she wasn't concerned about her future. Now let's look at the synonyms for the word surprised. Amazed, stunned, astonished, astounded. And the opposites are unimpressed, indifferent, unemotional, emotionless. And as you can see from this slide, we use the prepositions at and by with this group of adjectives. For example, she was amazed at the news. She was stunned by the news. And the prepositions are different with the second group. We say unimpressed by or with something or someone, indifferent to someone or something, unemotional or emotionless about something. When describing our physical condition, we want to show that we are full of energy and enthusiasm, we say that we are excited, energetic, fresh and lively. And the opposites are tired, exhausted, worn out, fatigued. Anxiety is the feeling when we are worried and we don't know what will happen in the future and the adjectives to describe that are anxious, nervous, worried. And the opposites? Relieved, carefree, calm. When someone is embarrassed at or about something, it means that the person doesn't feel very comfortable, that he or she might be ashamed of something or feeling awkward. When you're confused about something, you don't know what to do, and being ashamed of something is quite a strong feeling when you actually feel sorry for something. When someone feels guilty, it means that the person is really sorry for something and regrets doing something. When someone is angry because other people have what he or she wants to have but doesn't have, this person is jealous. When you do something great and want to tell the world about that, you are proud of something. But having too much of that feeling is not probably good. This is all I wanted to tell you about feelings and emotions in English, and if you like this video, please drop me a like and hit the subscribe button.